All right, so let's get a little bit into the electronic side of it. Um, everything is centered around this um, this little board here. Um, you need a um, an AC adapter. Um, the one I link to is this one, which is kind of cool because it it uh, can handle quite a bit of, of current, and it's uh, you can also set it to uh, whatever voltage you want, anywhere between three and twelve volts. So we want it set to six. Uh, these specific servos that I picked are six. Uh, they're five volt servos that can handle six. Um, I guess five would be ideal. Um, six just gives them a little more oomph and you're just pushing them a little bit. But um, that's one thing you need. You need one of these power adapters to get it uh, going. Um, the OpenCM system, this is a, a board created by Robotis or sold by Robotis. And um, it's essentially, it's this little uh, Arduino type board. Uh, it's programmed exactly like an Arduino. Um, they have a library that allows it to talk to their servos. And um, we'll get into the, the coding in a minute. But I just wanted to show you the board. This is what it is. Um, they have, this is uh, called an OpenCM expansion board, the, the board that this little uh, computer just pops onto. Um, you will need that and it's very convenient because it gives you a switch it gives you a place to plug in your power it gives you uh, places to plug in your servos um, and a couple of auxiliary switches that you can use uh, within your code like i did um, now just so you know some of the robotic servos use four pins um, some of them have uh, communicate using three pins uh, the the little baby inexpensive servos uh, that i picked up from them are all three pins so we'll be using this side of the board not this one but just so you know the same setup could work with their more expensive um, better servos that have a, a cleaner communication through the four pins system um, you could just plug them in here and the exact same code would would handle them so uh, that's a robotist uh, thing one thing to note they you will need to buy some wires some servo wires this is the connector that the servo uses. Uh, let me see if I can get close. You can see, this is what plugs into your servo. It's a white connector with three pins. It's not the same as this beige connector, which is what you need to plug into your OpenCM. So this cable that goes from beige to white is the one that you will need but only for at the tail end to plug into the board everything else uses this so if you're connecting from one servo to another you'll want one of these wires that has the white connector to the white connector and this is what will connect They're, they make a short one that you can use to go from from one servo to another and then long ones that you can use to go from one little robot to another little robot um, and unfortunately this is the longest one they make so uh, when you need to go longer lengths you're going to have to cut one of these up and extend add an extension to it in order to get it to the right length they only have like th uh, two different lengths available but uh, this is that's why you need to buy a few extras because you might need to uh, take some of these and extend them depending on what drum you used and how big the distance between the robots is. Now in order to program the servos um, you're going to need one of these. This is also on the list. Um, it's uh, the uh, this is all from Robotis. It's a U2D2 programmer which is this little clear box here and this board um, it's also extremely handy to have. It makes everything so much easier um, and it's the U2D2 power hub. So between the, the and they allow the the uh, board there's a place for this uh, little device on the board so you can just pop it on there and it behaves as if it's just one one piece which is a lot easier to handle this way but um, what's cool about this is it allows you to use a programmer feed your servos power through a um, power connector um, it has a nice switch to turn it on and off um, this is this is what I use all the time to program. So basically, you know, you take your USB micro, plug it into um, plug it into the programmer. Um, you 
need to um, get power into your servo. It, it doesn't get the power directly from the USB because um, those servos draw more, more current than what you can get out of your computer. So in order to get power, you have to plug in a connector right into there and um, and then um, you can you can fire it up. And let's talk about the servos here. When you get these are great little um, servos, these little robotics. Um, they're not super powerful. Um, they're super cheap, so you can do some great little robotic projects without spending a lot of money. This this guy is a somewhere in the twenties, uh, twenty dollar, thirty dollar, uh, less than thirty dollar range. Um, they're very quick. Uh, they have all the capabilities of all the different. Um, um, servos uh, the robotic servos that they sell so um, for twenty dollars it's it's amazing what you can do I mean I couldn't afford to make this uh, this doorbell bot using um, you know four hundred dollar servos uh, the the higher end ones um, you know four hundred dollars times uh, fourteen it's it's a lot of money but these guys are twenty bucks so you can do uh, some pretty cool robotic projects without spending a fortune on it okay so let's go through the whole process of setting up a servo um, you will need your your um, u2d2 programmer as well as the u2d2 power hub that it sits on those are two separate pieces bolt them together um, you'll need one of these cables with the white to white uh, three pin connectors um, this one goes into the programmer this way you click it in there and then you click it into any one of this is basically a hub they all um, basically the power is distributed amongst all of these so you have to plug this into one of them it doesn't matter which one um, once it's plugged in that means that whatever power comes in here is spread out into all of these different pins which means that um, the signal is coming in here but also the power is coming in here and they're being kind of bridged together so that way the servo will not only get power from here but it'll also get the signal the uh, data that's going to be coming in from this guy so then uh, we go ahead and plug in um, the power that's uh, like a six volt power supply um, five or six will work plug in the USB into the programmer so now it's connected to your computer and um, and then we plug in the servos um, in this case I'll um, let's start with a brand new one I'll do this we get a brand new servo um, that's a four pin let me get a three pin wire right here you plug it into it has two different ports it's an in and out but it doesn't matter which you choose as your input or your output. Um, they're, they're basically identical. That's why all of these servos can be chained together. You can have 20 servos all in one chain um, as long as you're careful about how much current you're drawing because eventually you know, you have uh, the voltage will drop across, uh, along a long wire. But for the most part, um, you can chain them together in any way you want. So you plug it in there. And then you plug in your servo on this end. So once you plug it in, now it's getting data from the programmer. It's still not getting power though. Um, you need to flip this switch on. Once you flip that switch on, um, here, let me do it again. You see that little red light blink that tells you it got, it's on and it got power. So that's really all you do there. Now um, let's move on to the computer end of it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do um, after you have your servo plugged into the uh, U2D2 board is um, to you need to download a free uh, program called Dynamixel Wizard 2.0, which you can get from uh, robotis.us. And um, it's just a free app that goes along with the, the little programmer board. Uh, once you click on it, you're gonna get this page, or it might ask you to update uh, the the software you have. Um, always, you know, keep it at the latest version. 
Um, but once you get this, the first thing you need to do is go into options. And here is where you're going to set um, which protocol you're using. It'll probably already be on protocol 2.0. That's what you need. So I wouldn't touch that. Um, this is where you set your COM port. I'm using COM 15 uh, hooked up to the little board. So it's already there, um, but it, you might have other things on there. So you need to pick your COM port if it's not selected for you already. Uh, the other thing is baud rates. Um, you need to be on the right baud rate or, or it won't um, be able to communicate. So on, on my software, I like to use 1 million uh, bits per second. Um, but that's not the way the servos come originally. And I forgot what they come as. I think they come as a 57600. But you basically select the ones you think you need. Uh, in order to find the servo. So right now it's going to be set to probably 57600. So I'm going to leave that on so it checks for these. It'll check for that. It'll check for that. Uh, I don't think we need to check for that. But um, you could just say select all. That's one. Let's do select all. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, it just takes longer to find the servo if it has to go through all those different baud uh, speeds. So let's say it's all of them and now it's ready. So now you do a scan. What, make sure everything's plugged in the way I described, and uh, then you do a scan. Now it's scanning uh, COM15 at 9600 baud, uh, 9600 baud, and um, it didn't find anything, but then it switched over to 57600, and it found our servo. So it already found um, this little guy right here. So we don't need to keep searching, so we can just say skip. Once it found it, you'll see this. it's the ID right here. It's telling you at 57600, right there, um, it found an XL330-M288 servo, which is this little guy right here. Um, and then it's telling you that little asterisk there is saying that it's it needs to be updated to the latest firmware. That's pretty normal when you buy a new servo, it won't be uh, to the latest one. So you have to say update and then just follow the procedure. Right now it's uh, grabbing the latest firmware, which is version 48 and um, installing it into the servo itself. And that's something you rarely have to do, but um, you usually have to do it when you, when you open up a, a new box and plug in a brand new servo. So it's done. Say next, finish. Now that li little asterisk uh, over here went away. And um, and that's it. Now you have all of this information here, which most of it you don't need, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, eventually you will, you know, but for this, it's, uh, it's a very simple process. So the important ones, uh, ID. Right here it's saying that this servo has an ID of one. That's That means that Whenever you send a command to servo one, this is the one that's going to listen. They're they're all going to get that same command, but they'll, all of the other ones with a different uh, servo number will ignore it. But this guy will say, "Oh, that's for me," and it'll it'll do whatever you're telling it to do. So you need to make sure that that is set to the right number. On the Zenbot, the uh, the rotate servo I set as um, the main one. So say this is servo number one. That means this will be servo number 11. And I did that just to kind of organize them that way. So then on the next robot, this would be servo number two, and this would be servo number 12, uh, three, 13, and so on, all the way up to seven and, or yeah, seven and 17. So the way you set that, say we wanted to set this one to servo number two. So right here it's set at one, we come over to this side of the screen over here and you select the servo you want. So ID number two is the one we want, but it's important. And let me make sure it's on screen here. It's important that after you select it, you say save. Otherwise it won't, it won't take it. So once you hit save, now it's servo number two and you'll see it up here, servo number two. Next line is baud rate and the number it's giving you is one. So when you go down here, you're seeing that number one is equivalent to 57600 
uh, bits per second. We want 1 million for our uh, code. And this is arbitrary. You can pick whichever one you want. Um, for some things, you need faster speeds if you have a lot of servos going. Um, so 1 million is pretty safe for me. I, I rarely have to use anything other than that. So I always pick three and then hit save. And now your servos ID number two, your baud rates uh, 1 million. Um, return delay, you can leave the same. This just means how many milliseconds um, between commands. So um, usually I bring this down to like, like uh, 50 or so, but that could be a problem with these little guys. So you could leave that, uh, leave that alone. Um, everything else here is not really um, applicable, but it's worth looking into because you will need it for other projects. But here, none of this stuff really matters. Um, you will get to a place, uh, let me find it here, where, oh, here we are. Maximum position limit, minimum position limit. So it goes from zero all the way to 4095. If you say you want um, the servo to move to zero, it, um, it'll it basically go to one position. And if you say for it to go to 4095, it'll basically go to 360 degrees almost it'll do a full turn and and so that's based on the servo doing a full um, circle um, we don't need it to do a full circle we need it to do a, a very very little move um, you don't have to set these limits um, this just means that if your program tells it to go to a number that's outside of these limits these limits are inside the servo and they will take precedence. So if you leave it this way, basically your software can tell it to go anywhere within the circle and it'll do it. But if you say no, if you, if you go above 2000 or below 1000, uh, your device will crash. You can set those limits in the servo itself. And then no matter what your program tells it to do, it'll never go outside of those limits. Um, so it's like a, uh, secondary safety. The way you set that is um, you have these dials and you can kind of see as I'm turning the servo you can see this dial up here moving and um, you just you know look look pick the number that corresponds and you put it in there and then you hit save and you can set the, the maximum lim, uh, limits that way. If you want to test your servo, like say right now I set uh, my maximum at, um, I don't know, make it 2000. And my minimum, I'm gonna set to 500. So now right here you can see that this, now your range, instead of being the full circle, it's just from there to there. Um, I can torque the servo on, and then as I move it, you can see it'll move, but it will never move outside of those limits you gave it. Um, right now it's torqued on, you can torque it off, and now you, you can move it by hand. Um, because it's torqued off, I can move it outside of its limits um, because it's not getting any power, so it can't prevent me from doing it. But if I torque it back on, it'll jump right into, um, it'll, it'll never intentionally move into this area. And um, that's pretty much all there is to this software. I don't think there's anything else you actually need right now um, for this, for this uh, project.